This is Our Dog Stum by Karen Hopkin. Chimps can use sign language to talk to their trainers. Monkeys can learn to count. A crow can figure out how to use a stick to get at the hard to reach grub. Chickens can learn to play checkers. Even worms can be taught to run mazes. So which animal is the smartest? You're probably thinking that chimps are smarter than chickens, and that crows are smarter than worms, and that you're smarter than all of them. But where do those rankings come from? Okay, you probably are smarter than the average worm, but why do we assume that bigger beasts are smarter than smaller ones? Or that furry critters are brainier than slithering wigglers that are coated in slime? And how can we think dogs are so smart? Sure, a dog might be clever enough to fetch his own leash when he wants to go out, but the same mutt might also bark at a vacuum cleaner and spend a whole hour chasing his own tail. Is Rover really any brighter than a hamster, a chicken, or that kid who's always eating Play-Doh? How can you measure an animal's brain power? The hardest part is coming up with the right test. A dog can't sit down with a number two pencil and take a multiple choice exam. So the test has to be something the dog can learn to do. Select a block by nudging it with a nose or paw, for example. The test also has to be something that the dog wants to do. A dog might stare at that block all day without budging until she figures out that there's a treat hidden underneath. Norton Milgram and his co-workers at the University of Toronto at Scarabo use treats to give dogs a canine IQ test. The dog is presented with a tray with a blue block on it. Underneath the block is a treat. The animal moves the block and gets the treat. So far, so good. Now the test gets tricky. The dog is presented with the same tray, but this time it has both a blue block and a yellow coffee can lid, or a white bowl or black square of cloth, on it. The treat is now under the yellow lid, or white bowl, etc. The test, how long does it take for the dog to learn that the treat is always under the new item on the tray? The smarter the dog, the quicker she'll find the treat. That seems simple enough, but things become more complicated when you try to compare different kinds of animals. Monkeys wipe the floor with dogs on this test. Dogs may have to try hundreds of times before they select the yellow lid nine times out of ten. Monkeys learn much more quickly to find the hidden treat. Does that mean monkeys are smarter than dogs? Not necessarily. The test was originally designed for monkeys, and it gives them an unfair advantage. By nature, monkeys are curious and like to check out new things. Dogs, on the other hand, tend to be wary about approaching new things. As Stephen Budiansky reports in his book, The Truth About Dogs, one pooch was so scared of the yellow lid that he had to be excused from the study. If the test is made more dog-friendly, on the other hand, canines do just fine. Instead of introducing a yellow lid, the treat is put under another blue block on the opposite side of the tray. Dogs learn as quickly as any monkey that the treat is always on the opposite side opposite the first block they saw. Even if you could find a test that was perfectly fair to all animals, in a way, it's silly to ask whether one kind of animal is smarter than the other. All animals have the ability to learn things that are important to them. Otherwise, they wouldn't survive. A chicken doesn't need to be a chess champion to figure out where to get food or how to run from a predator. So a chicken is as smart as it needs to be to earn a living as a chicken. If you still believe that dogs are much smarter than chickens, it's probably because dogs are good at, list at learning the things we want them to learn. Fetching the newspaper, for example. Try to convince a chicken to do that. The truth is most dogs' tricks take advantage of dogs' built-in behavior patterns. Things that dogs are born knowing how to do or learn easily. Chasing and retrieving are leftover hunting behaviors. For a dog, fetching the paper or a tennis ball is not a reflection of intelligence. It's basically a demonstration that dogs will be dogs. Canines may not be the deepest thinkers in the world, but perhaps that's for the best. The life of a dog sitting alone all day waiting for everyone to come home can be pretty boring. Super smart animals would probably get totally stressed out, says University of Pennsylvania's researcher James Serpel. Look at it this way. If dogs were any smarter, they probably wouldn't choose to hang around with us. Dog talk. Listen. Do you hear it? No matter where you are, if you stick your head out a window for a minute or two, you'll probably hear a dog barking. What is it they're trying to say? Does that racket actually mean something? Why do dogs bark? It depends on who you ask, says Nicholas Dodman of Tufts Veterinary School in Massachusetts. Some say dogs bark because they can. Unlike dogs, adult wolves, our canine pals' ancestors, don't really bark. They don't say much of anything, says Ray Coppinger of Hampshire College in Massachusetts. So barking seems to be something dogs have picked up since they were tamed. Maybe they've learned it can be useful for getting attention, like tooting a, on a car horn, says Dodman. It's an all-purpose. Hey, I'm here. Look at me. But not all barks are alike. 
that happy going for a walk yap can sound very different from the threatening stranger at the door snarl. So maybe barks do have different meanings. Sophia Yin tried to find out. As a student at the University of California in Davis, Yin recorded the sound of dog barking in three situations, when a doorbell rang, while playing with a tennis ball, and when shut out of the house. She then analyzed some 4,500 barks on her computer, rating them according to their loudness, harshness, and pitch. Whether they sounded high, arf, arf, or low, woof, woof. Yin found that the barks were different. The doorbell barks were harsher and deeper, for example, whereas play barks were pitched higher. But just because her computer can tell the difference between one wolf and another doesn't mean dogs can. We need to do a playback study, says Yin, to see if the dogs respond the right way. Getting excited when they hear a playful rough or upset when they hear the menacing doorbell bow wow. Of course, maybe barking isn't supposed to mean anything to dogs, just to their masters. After all, that's who dogs talk to most. A Japanese toy company is trying to take advantage of that possibility by selling a small recorder that clips onto a dog's collar and translates its barking for you. A special pager will let you know whether Fido is happy, sad, frustrated, or alarmed. That's probably stretching it, says Yin. Without seeing the dog, it's hard to say whether a particular roof means more kibbles, please, or yeah, I ate your shoe. Still, even though barking isn't a complex language, it probably does mean something. A dog will continue to bark as long as barking brings results. When a dog barks at the mailman, he goes away, notes James Serpell at the University of Pennsylvania. It's very reinforcing. 